Hello. Hey. Hi. So, that that so ending that last thing. time. Um. That was a. Well, you know what? You know what? The way I look at it, we were gonna have to. We were gonna have to get there and and do that at some point, right? So, get the get it out of the way. You know. Yeah. Just, knock that submarine yeah. out of the park. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like we, 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 you know, we. You save the best for last. That's how you do it, and that's what we're doing here. Exactly. It was. Listen, this is a big brain. I knew what I was doing. This was a 5D chess move. I planned it all from the get-go. I. I'm not lying or making this up right now. <laughs> yeah, to we totally planned that. <laughs> Yeah, no, for sure. All right, so anyway, yes, last time we went through the torture room and got the submarine ending, which ended with everybody dying horribly. So let's and, uh, not do that again, preferably. I, I, I just... Um, I will say whoever stabbed them all... Uh, it seemed, unless, unless one of them was faking their death, it does seem like one of the nine is not the culprit, is not zero, but they, I don't know, they could have been faking their death, it could have been, it could have been June, you know? Could have been or, anything, uh, and I won't tell you. Yeah. So anyway, we're we we uh, we we're ri rewinding time here yep. uh, and, and and going back. Yeah. To, we're back in the to, past yeah. to pick the door that well is a blast. <laughs> yeah. All right. It was all a bad dream. Yes. None of that happened. Instead, we actually went through door five the whole time. Yeah. No. I. Yeah. Exactly. Hey. Wait. I want to go through door five too. What? What are you saying, Jumpy? All right. I have to go back to novel. Silly me. If you're going through that door, then I'm going with you. Uh, no. Man, she is, uh... Hmm. She just wants to be with her friend Jumpy, man. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm still a little, uh... I got my eye on her. That's all I'm saying. You got your eye on everyone, I swear. <laughs> well, in a situation like this, you have to, okay? No, you can't. I I can't take you with me. Yeah, it's full of giblets. Why? We're... Well, you know what's in there, don't you? Are you sure you want to see that? Well... No, of course you don't. June opened her mouth as if to say something, but instead closed it again and looked at the floor. Junpei felt an ache in his chest at her clear distress, but the choice was not his to make. There was nothing else he could do. Junpei turned away from June, doing his best to silence his turbulent emotions. Please, let me go into door five. Devin scratched his head and looked at the young man. Man, now we're right back where we started, you know that? Junpei's bracelet is number five, right? If we are going to add Junpei, then we must subtract five from the rest of us. Oh, it's a good thing you can easily do that. Ace, please, I, take good care of Clover. I love how, like, Junpei can just say, nope, I'm doing this. And then the rest of the like team, everybody else is just like, oh, oh, okay. okay. We'll, Listen, we'll accommodate you. <laughs> it's called main <laughs> character <laughs> privilege, okay? I know, but like, it's just, it's just really funny that no one ever really questions it. They're just like, oh, okay, okay, sure. We'll just, um, we'll shuffle around the rest of us. You I mean, know? they That's had quite a few questions when you chose door three the other day. Well, that was less of a choice and more of a what we call a dick move <laughs> surely you wouldn't do that again <laughs> right yeah 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 no no of course not <laughs> yeah oh, all right <clears throat> that's that's fine don't go away 
No, you get to go to the other door. You need to listen to me, Clover. Go to door four with the others. Yeah, he probably doesn't want her to see all that gooey stuff either, to be fair. No! Don't be so selfish. Yeah, don't be selfish. Be like <laughs> yeah. Junpei. Be a Junpei. bit more selfless. Be like Junpei. Be a little more selfish. Yeah. Why? He is welled up in Clover's eyes. I, I just like to imagine Junpei standing there staring at her with a giant smirk on his face and just like... <laughs> See, Junpei is actually, you know... He's, he's stealing. He's Mr. Steal Your Brother. That's all it yeah, is. Yeah, he just wants your hot brother, man. I mean, who doesn't? All for himself. Yeah, for I mean, real. Do you see look this man? That, yeah, look at that wrist, man. Sheesh, that guy's drip. Whoa. She bit her lip and did her best to fight them off. Snake's expression softened and he put his arms around Clover. He held her close and whispered into her ear. You'll be fine. Just relax. Hopefully. It looked as though he whispered two or three more words, but whatever they were, Junpei didn't hear them. Hmm. What did he tell her? That is none of your business. He couldn't help but wonder what the other man had said. I wish hot brother guy would whisper into my ear words of encouragement. I wish hot brother guy would turn into a pile of giblets. <laughs> I think only one of us is gonna get what we want, though. Womp womp. Wait. Uh-oh. Snake pulled back from his sister, his eyes kind and inquiring. I mean, did you forget what we saw in the shower room? No, I remember. I just, you know, maybe there's... Maybe there's a way for him to not... Copium. I don't know. Copium? <laughs> yeah, off the copium. Yeah. Okay. I understand. Her voice was barely audible from where Junpei stood. Hmm. Yeah, well, that was awkward. Before long, new teams were assembled. Let's make sure we've got this straight. Those going to door five are me, seven, and Snake. Yes. Seven plus two plus five equals 14. And the digital root of 14, one plus four, is five. Correct. And those what going to door four are Lotus, Santa, June, Ace, and Clover. Eight plus three plus six plus one plus four is twenty-two. What a what a big group that is. And the digital root of twenty-two is two plus two, four. We're okay with this. Yeah. No problems here. Looks fine to me. Yes. Let's do it. All right then. Seven Snake and Junpei scanned their numbered bracelets in quick succession. The screen of the red showed three asterisks. The lever's all that's left. Okay. All right, then. Let's go. Junpei glanced around one last time, his hand resting on the lever of the red. Okay. Please be careful. Nah, we're gonna play it dangerously. It's the only way to play. I mean, I plan on splashing around in the giblets myself. Mmm, giblets. Concern was written plainly across her face. We will. Junpei looked at her in the eye and gave what he hoped was a reassuring nod. He pulled the lever. Ooh, still splattered. With the sharp clank of a lock releasing, the door swung open. And it's open. Ahead of them in the small hallway were the pitiful remains of the ninth man. Oh. That's messed up. Yep. That... that was the ninth man. You're just gonna keep looking? For a Let's moment, go into gruesome detail blows. again. What? I said, let's go into gruesome detail again. Oh, gosh, yeah. What, like, the pizza dough and everything? Oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Dry as he might, his eyes would not leave the corpse, and his feet would not leave the floor. Seven Two seemed paralyzed. Snake, on the other hand, seemed unconcerned. 
He walked calmly down the bloody hallway and only stopped when he realized his companions were not following. Oh, how can you... Well, do you intend to kill me? I assume you haven't forgotten the door only remains open for nine seconds, have you? Is this foreshadowing? <laughs> <laughs> he hadn't even bothered to turn around. His head was at most slightly cocked toward one shoulder. Uh, sorry. Let's go! The perks of being blind, he doesn't have to see it. Yunpei and Seven he? looked at one another, nodded, and threw themselves through the door. As they did, a cold tone sounded from the left wrists of all three men. Oh. Devin and Junpei looked down at their bracelets. On both of them and on snakes, a red skull had flickered to life. Damn it! The countdown started! They had scarcely processed this information when... Yeah, this totally wouldn't make you, you know... Shit your pants or anything? No, I I would be very calm and collected. Absolutely. With the metallic slam, the numbered door behind them swung shut. Shit, the door! There's no turning back now. And if we don't manage to find the deactivation device. Hey, where is the dead? You got 81 seconds to find it. The fear and urgency in Seven's face reflected what all three of them felt. How the hell should I know? Stay calm. Look around you. Okay, okay, uh, I get it. Junpei spun around searching desperately for the dead. Ah! Oh. He found it easily enough. It was on the wall next to the closed door labeled 5. Wow, they it was literally just right on the other side of the door. They didn't even have to walk anywhere. Found it. Right Ew, here. This was a freebie. Yeah, I guess, you know, everyone gets one. Everybody gets one, yeah. As he yelled, he struck the scanner with his hand. The other two scrambled to follow suit. As soon as they finished, Snake threw the lever down. Uh, uh, uh. <sighs> No sweat. <sighs> well, it looks like it stopped. As he spoke, Junpei wiped the sweat from his forehead with a trembling hand. Goddamn thing's gonna give me a heart attack. A muscle stood out in Seven's neck and the corners of his mouth were twitching. Jumpy, are you alright? Are you guys okay? No, we blew up. Yeah, we're fine. Just, you know, covered in viscera. Well, no, we're not covered in it, but... Oh, your shoes is... are ruined. Yeah. These were... I just bought these, too. I know, right? These are, all... Golly. These are ultra boosts, man. My, my poor Yeezys. My new Jordans. Ugh. They could hear anxious voices, muffled but distinct from the other side of the door. Yeah, we're fine. The detonators have been deactivated. They heard relieved sighs, and even through the door, the three men could feel the tension disperse. All right, we're moving on. Be careful, okay? Okay. Sure thing. And just like that, we're going, I guess. And they're gone. See ya. They heard footsteps moving away, and before long, they were alone again. Now. Junpei looked around. Doesn't look like we can go any further this way. The hallway ended roughly 20 or 30 feet from where they stood. Maybe this wall can be moved. I doubt it. Or not. Yep. <sighs> it's not budging. Nah, that sounds more likely. Hey, there's a door over there. To the left, however, was a wooden door that looked positively inviting by comparison. In the middle of it was a plaque that read First Class. A first class cabin, huh? Well, it seems like it. Let's have a look then, shall we? Yoink. That door swung and hit me in the face. All right then. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. 
Without hesitation, Snake opened the door and stepped inside. Seven followed closely behind him. Junpei moved to follow them as well, but... Oh. He stopped just short of the threshold and looked back, not knowing why. I don't want to look, but... I don't want to look, but, you know... I, you curiosity. just gotta do it, man. I just gotta... You know, it's how often do you get to see a dead body. Right? Lying in the small hallway was a man's body, or at least what was left of it. He tried hard to avoid looking at the grisly scene, but it just wouldn't leave his mind. Oh, it's so horrible. I, I can't even tell what's what. What had once been a man's internal organs now looked like so much vomit. Okay. So something had chewed it up and spit out the better part of his okay. torso. Okay. They... It was hideous, but worse still, it was cruel. This this game really wants to drive home uh, the the descriptive nature of how absolutely messed up it is. I mean, if they can't show the body, they're sure as heck gonna tell you what it looks like. It was hard to believe the thing on the floor had once been human. The black pool of thick blood. The lumps of glistening flesh spread across the floor. The awkward, twisted tangle of shredded intestines. The Ooh, head delicious. wrenched to some grotesque, unnatural position. He'd been wearing these. Yeah, he the had. The glasses lay next to his head. The lenses were cracked and the frame bent and distorted. And next to the glasses lay a bracelet, the number nine still displayed on its face. The bracelet's off. Oh wait, Zero did say. Lastly, let us discuss how to remove the bracelets. There are only two ways to do so. One, you escape from this ship. Two, more likely, which is Zero. In other words, once the bracelet is taken outside the confine of the ship, or the backside of the Mara's heartbeat has fallen to Zero, the bracelet comes off when you're dead. And he is very dead. Uh, but what the hell's the point of getting it off when you end up like this? Uh, oh, just imagining how it must have happened. This was a human. Yeah. <clears throat> Suddenly, Junpei felt his stomach convulse and a knot of muscle gripped his throat. Oh god. Oh. I feel like I'm gonna puke. Oh, I gotta get out of here. He clapped his hands over his mouth and ran to the first class cabin. <laughs> the atmosphere changed immediately. The room was gorgeous and despite the apparent age of the ship, none the worse for wear. Huh, what? Where did they... He looked around. Seven and Snake were nowhere to be seen. There were two doors on the right side of the room. He opened the one on his right and went through. Through here? On the other side of the door was a short hallway. He jogged down the hallway, opened the door at the other end, and peeked through. There they were to his right, busy examining something. Ooh. Hmm. What's up? Chicken butt. Uh. He stepped through the door and walked towards them. Check this out. We found this thing here on the door. The red light's on. Does that mean it's locked? Uh, typically, that's what that would mean, yes. So I would occupied. assume. Occupied. Yeah, it's occupied. Haven't you ever seen a bathroom, Junpei? Yeah. Is there any other way out? We looked around a little. Other than this door, we didn't find anything. So you're telling me that unless we can open this door? Yes. We won't be going anywhere. Junpei stepped away from the door and looked around the room. This looks like a bedroom. Well, it's a first-class cabin. I would assume it has a nice bedroom. 
then the other room is probably a living room. Or the closest you can get to one on a ship. All right, let's find a way to open this door. Come on, guys. Yeah. Wow. That's a lot of angles. Peek away Peek out. Away out. All right, welcome okay. to the first class cabin. We have arrived because we are first class, obviously. Yeah, it's us and our boys, Seven and Snake. Let's see, Let's seeing if there's anything immediately obvious to search. A white desk. Feels kind of fancy. But nothing else about it. It's a small round chair. Looks like it probably goes to the vanity. Yep. Okay. What well, about the actual lock? So this is the locking thing. It's flashing red. That's usually not a good sign. Is that a microphone? Looks like a satellite dish. Uh, you're gonna be Snake, by the way. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, let me see. I don't know. How's that? I don't know. Huh. No. Um, hmm. Okay, I got it. Well, judging by the feel of it, I would guess we are meant to produce some sort of sound. And this device will sense it and unlock. Some sort of lock, apparently. It's connected to a microphone, so that's a very interesting trigger, it looks like. And there's no keyhole in the door. True. But there's some strange device in lieu of one. So I think this is a dead end right now. Uh, let's check the bed. A bed with a canopy. I've seen things like this in movies and stuff, but never in real life. True, you don't see too many these days. I can't see the details, obviously, but I imagine it's one of those princess beds Clover is so fond of. Clover wants one of these? Yes. He wants a princess bed. Didn't I say that? You think it doesn't suit her? Uh, yeah, are I you? Yes, you could. Are you say calling that. my sister? Are you saying my sister is not a princess? Uh, hmm, yeah. Moving on. Ah, Junpei, judge her by appearances, will you? And well, you should not. What did he mean by this? What did he mean by this? That was a weird. Or anything in the uh, pillow. There was. Oh, wow. Look at that. Gore plate A. I see. This feels like glass. A rectangular plate of glass. Is there something written on the surface? Yeah, it's a sheet of music with a couple of A notes. Wow, I'm impressed you knew what those were, Junpei. Just A's. Yeah, that's it. Kind of weird, huh? Transparent well, music I would... source sheet made from glass. It has a number of A notes on it. I would posit that you have to line it up with other sheet music notes and create some sort of song that will reveal a way out of the room. That... But I'm blind. What do I know? You know that, that sounds pretty reasonable. That was not, you know, that was not supposed to... Hmm. I mean, it, it's a good guess. I... yeah. It took Junpei by surprise. Snake, usually so calm and collected, suddenly began to move. Mm. He stared about the room almost frantically, clearly looking for something. No, Junpei thought, not staring. After all, he's blind, you moron. Blind or not, Snake was clearly attempting to do something. 
At last, Junpei could no longer contain his curiosity. What's wrong? You got weird all of a sudden. Nick waited a moment before answering. I heard something strange. Something strange? Ah, well, never mind. It doesn't seem to be anything suspicious. Yeah. I don't wish to toot my own horn, but my <laughs> auditory senses are considerably more advanced than those of most humans. <laughs> Not to brag, but I am pretty awesome. I notice even the slightest of noises. Right. Are you going to tell me you can hear a needle feel, drop from a mile away? I feel like this guy is going to start reciting the Navy SEAL copy pasta. <laughs> he could. <laughs> he, he, no, he has the such demeanor a thing for would be it. impossible. However, by listening to the sound of footsteps and breathing, as well as sound echoing off the environment, I can locate most objects. Oh yeah, that's right. When Clover fell on the big staircase a little while ago, you were at her side immediately. What so the was... fuck did you just say about hmm. me, <laughs> you little bit? <laughs> I'll have you. I'll have you know, I graduated top of my class in the Navy SEALs. Uh, <laughs> Even the demeanor, look at that pose. Look at the pose he's striking. He is a little have smug. You know. He is a little have you... smug. <laughs> Just a little bit, yeah. Yes, I could hear it happening. In fact, I can run quite fast. Certainly as fast as you. My man and is Daredevil. And should someone attempt to start a fight with me, I am quite confident that I could defeat them. <laughs> yeah. No, really? wait, no, that's literally the Kira ka that's literally the Kira meme from JoJo. <laughs> what is it? The Yoshikage Kira like um My name is Yoshikage Kira. I'm 33 years old. Uh that is how I deal with society, and I know that it is what brings me happiness. Although, if I were to fight, I wouldn't lose to anyone. <laughs> well, I guess Snake is Kira, you confirmed it. Yeah. Junpei was somewhat taken aback by this revelation. He stared at Snake's skeptical. You don't believe me, do you? Care to give it a try? You think you can oh. take him? In in a fight. In a fight. Nah, this man's got a riz. He he I think he's telling the truth. I must warn you. You'll no doubt regret it. Hmm? Uh, uh, <laughs> uh. <laughs> Well, I suppose that's enough playing around. Let's resume our search, shall we? Yeah, y you too. With a small self-satisfied smile, Snake turned and walked away from Junpei. Is there anything else in the bed? There's nothing under the pillow. Right, I don't think there's Junpei anything else. Junpei just got thoroughly dismantled and absolutely just verbally destroyed. Okay, I think that's everything this perspective is gonna give us. Because I, nothing else here seems to be triggering anything. I'll check over here. I would, I would like the kid, the piano. Considering, oh, that's that's not a mu musical sheet. This isn't a score. This is a map of the ship. A map. There's a map of the ship here. Yeah. And then I imagine it will prove very helpful. You'd best hold on to it, Junpei. Okay, I'll be the pack mule. A music stand. Well, might as well put the glass pane on it. Oh, hmm. Is something wrong? Kind of hard to see the notes. Maybe if I put something under them? Hmm. A background for the notes. Can't see the notes very well with the glass being so transparent. We had something to slide underneath. Yeah, this puzzle, I see exactly where this is going. No. We're gonna have to play the song on the piano to open the door. Oh, I hope not. A piano keyboard. What is Snake doing? He can't play, can he? 
Well, at this point, I wouldn't doubt it. This piano. There's something amiss with the keys. You mean it's out of tune or something? No, no, not that. It's properly tuned. Just... Well, the sounds are clearly purposely different. The C key doesn't yield a C, but rather a different note entirely. The same goes for the D keys. They play some other note. Huh, why do you think it's like that? Isn't it painfully obvious? Zero modified it in some way. This piano, you see, is part of one of the puzzles Zero has set for us. Perhaps if we play the keys in the correct order, something will happen. No way! In other words, we need to play a song on the piano. I believe so. Huh. These keys are all messed up. Oh yeah, that's right. I got that score plate earlier. But I don't think that'll be enough to do anything with it. Let's check the mirror. It's totally a table with a mirror. Ah, uh, yes. You know, that sort of thing is known as a vanity. Were you aware of that, Junpei? No, my peasant mind has never seen a vanity before, your highness. Of course, vanity also refers to self-love, conceit, and narcissism. I am not aware of what any of those words mean, of course. As such, you could say that every day when a woman looks into one of these. She is staring at her own conceit and narcissism. Damn, bro, that, that's deep. Doesn't that strike you as terribly sad? No. An antique vanity. There's nothing in the drawer. Yep, totally empty. I guess we're sure on that. Okay. A bed. A bed. A bed. A bed. A bed. Junpei! I cannot help but notice your interest in the bed. Perhaps you were hoping we will spend some time on it. Together. Uh, yeah, no, no. Don't say stuff like that, damn. That's not a mental image I want. It's a bed. I don't want anybody getting the wrong My idea, man. so I'm just gonna leave it alone, okay? My man. Oh, and with the thought of Snake and Junpei on the bed together, I'm gonna cut this episode right here. Womp womp. Yep, so next time we will continue going through the first We'll leave that mental cabin. image in the heads of you guys. Maybe draw some fan art. Send it our way, you know what I'm saying? Leave it in the comments. Wait, you can't do that. I think he, I think he would really appreciate that, you know? Yeah, what he said. Anyway, bye!